I cannot even get a reading on the meter for a wind speed. And this has started turning. I'm working on the putting the blades on. I ran out of screws, so I'll have to go into town and get some more. And then it started raining. Once in a while, right now, I'm, the wind speed is zero. It, I did have, have seen it go up to three miles per hour, but I was surprised that it even started turning. Now this rotor is going to end up being about 400 pounds, so that's quite a bit. I still got four more blades to put on, then I got to seal up the top and bottom a little bit more. But it is going to get some action. You can see some of the bracing I have in here now. And it's just slowly turning. Now I'm going to have three wheels under here riding, or the, the turbine is going to be riding on the wheels. I have one right here and that will be geared up probably about 10 to 1. So this will add, the, when I put the wheels on there, I'll add some friction to it. But it'll also take some weight off of the center shaft here. And then I do have some temporary brake I put on there so I can break it just with a piece of wood. Those other four blades on there had a tremendous difference. Straight up now, going faster, get a little bit of breeze right now. And then our little one over there, that one's spinning pretty good too. It's a very slow RPM at the shaft. But the rotational velocity at the outer circumference is pretty good. Yeah, make you dizzy looking up at that all the time. Checking the wind speed between 5 and 10 miles per hour right now wind speed. This little one, that's when it'll start up probably just a little over one mile per hour wind speed. Let me switch over here. I'm just gonna keep holding this up. This big one starts up maybe not too much after that little one. Alright now the wind seems to have died down. Here it comes again. But I don't have the bottom on this one yet. I got the top on. But I'm going to get to that bottom one next. So it works at a pretty low wind speed. Right now there's no load. And the weight of this turbine rotor now is more like 450 pounds. Probably even a little bit more than that. Just adding everything up, it, it adds up. So it's quite a bit of torque on that center shaft. It has quite a bit of momentum then too. It's kind of like a flywheel with some fins on it. This is the top of the turbine looking down. I got I just used a tarp for the covering on top with the center hole. That's so where the air will escape. I gotta finish the bottom yet, and it really makes a difference to have this covering on the top because you want that air to swirl around inside there before it escapes. Not much wind right now, but it's still going, and somebody's shooting. Get that bottom covered up. This is a rotational velocity 
on the circumference. It's my little brake. Turbine's a little bit out of balance, maybe about a quarter inch, it looks like. Quarter inch and 12 feet. I guess it ain't too bad. When I get my wheels on there, it should level it off pretty good. And this is my little brake. That's what I use to stop it. I got two of these, one on each side, but. Close it down and put more pressure on it and bring it to a stop. The wind speed is between 5 and 10 miles an hour again and I started putting some wheels underneath the turbine. I'm going to have two that were just going to be idler wheels and then one for power. I'm having a little bit of difficulty, I think, with that uh, unbalanced wheel. I'm showing it's a quarter difference. And you can hear it on the wheel. It binds up a little bit and then opens again. So I think I'm going to have to do something to try to balance it out a little bit. And I might have to get maybe a smaller wheel too. The RPM isn't probably up where I'd like it to be. Well, it's just, it's just uh, you know, the wind isn't that much right now. But I think I'd probably like to have a higher RPM wheels, at least on the power wheel. And I noticed that my axle is a little bit flexible. I'm going to do something to stiffen this up a little bit. I can shake it. There's a tremendous amount of torque on there. And I think I'm going to have to maybe put some angle braces in here like I got up there from the bottom to stiffen that up a little bit. So I'm going to do a little changes, I think. But it seems like the principle is working. These wheels are a little bit out of round, I noticed. It's causing a little bit of binding, too. Maybe if I let some air out of the tires, it might do it. But <laughs> darn things are out of round. <laughs> I think I just added about 10 more pounds to the turbine now. I beefed up the center shaft and got some angle braces on here. Hold a little more steady. And it seems to be running pretty true now. I think I got it pretty flat. Hear a little creaking above. That could be tarp or just a wood creaking I guess. I gotta put some duct tape on some of this tarping. That was my cover for underneath, just some tarps. Wheel is clicking a little bit. Um, you're running pretty decent. I'm gonna, I'll check the wind speed while I got going here. See what we got going. 10 miles an hour, 9, 8, 10, around 10 miles an hour it looks like. RPM on the shaft. See, like a smaller wheel I think would still work alright. Probably want something a little faster there for generating power. I suppose I could gear it up. I'm going to put one more idler wheel on and then one more for power. I suppose I could gear it up too. I'll have to do the one for power a little different so the whole shaft is spinning. Bearings will be out here and in there. But so far it looks like it might work. Kind of reminds me of a carnival ride. I suppose it'd be interesting in height. See if I can hold that. You know, camera gets stuck up there. The people right around on this. The wind has kind of let up right now and slowed down a little bit. But according to the online wind turbine calculator, a vertical axis wind turbine of this size in a 10 mile an hour wind would be generating about 69 watts of power. That's minus the losses of the turbine. Plus you would have some more losses for the generator too. 
So it doesn't sound like a whole lot of power, but that's kind of why I was talking about like a 20 foot diameter one, maybe eight feet high in that other video. If, it was, if I had one that size right now, it would probably be generated like maybe 231 watts. But this is kind of like a study, kind of like a feasibility study if I want to make a bigger one. I didn't use the best materials to build this. The blades on this turbine is just some hardwood panels, 4 by 8 sheets of eighth inch hardwood panel. And I cut it up into four pieces. So each blade you see on there is 2 foot by 4 foot and it's eighth inch thick. I was getting those sheets for like $11 a sheet. There wasn't much else comparable to the price. There is a high density polyethylene sheet that would probably be pretty good, but I wasn't going to spend the amount of money they wanted for them. They wanted more like $90 for something like that. So I was trying to keep this as inexpensive as I could, and those hardwood panels were pretty inexpensive. The four, it took me four sheets and it added 100 pounds to the turbine. So that turbine is pretty hefty. But it does spin up pretty good, even just in a light wind. It's just a light wind right now, and it's still creeping along there. It's pretty steady. That's one thing, you get a heavy turbine, the inertia that it develops will keep it spinning longer. It'll take a little longer for it to spin up, but it also keeps spinning a little longer after the wind dies down because of the inertia. So I still got one more idler wheel on this one to put up and my powertrain wheel. Now I'm going to have to do a little more thinking on that one because I want to be able to engage it, disengage it, probably with some kind of lever. So I'm going to do a little more thinking on that and I'm going to keep working on this one. So thanks for watching.